conversations before. The Monday night business conversation is simply myself, Martin Gilchrist from Gilchrist & Co. Chartered Accountants, getting together with lovely people that I know in the world of business and having a conversation as if we were in a coffee shop in Belfast City Centre and just happened to bump into each other and we were talking about how it was all going down, as it were. This evening, I always say I'm delighted, but I'm particularly delighted this evening to have the um, wonderful Catherine, Catherine Muldoon and the brilliant Alison Matthews um, to join me this evening. It's great to have um, ladies on this evening because it's been men up until now. It has been all men. And we're going to see it. Um, is it men are from Mars and ladies are from ladies are from Venus? Is that, is that the expression? Yeah, the well, we're going to yep. see the view from Venus this evening, and I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. And I'm going to time is short, and there's lots to be said, so I think we'll just get started. And I'm going to start with you, Catherine. Catherine, tell us who you are, the person, what makes you, Catherine Muldoon, and then we'll come back later and we'll look at what you do as a professional career. No problem. Well, I'm Catherine Muldoon, as you say, and um, so it's the thing that I always like to say is what I'd like to be remembered for and who I'd like people to remember me as. Um, and that comes down to just a really, really passionate person and I put everything I can into everything I do. Um, and I am the mummy of two of the most perfect children in the world. And um, I am so happy that I'm part of their lives so much to be able to do that. Um, and yeah, I'm, I think people know me as a really, really passionate and excitable person. Excitable person? Yes, absolutely. I get, I get really excited about things and I want to be involved in things that are exciting for other people. Very good, very good. And then what's the profession? So that's you, that's you as a person. What, what, what is the profession? I guess I'm probably going to be one of the stranger people to come onto this because technically I'm, I'm basically unemployed, but I'm not really. I'm, um, I'm a stay-at-home mum and I am a student. And I am a trustee in one of Northern Ireland's newest uh, parent charities. And I'm also vice chair of our local playgroup. So I have lots and lots of things going on constant. Oh, I know. Um, and then with having the two kids as well, that's on top of it. And I'm just, I'm really, really excited to be part of all these things and helping within my community to do those things. Uh, you're the busiest unemployed person that I've ever come across. I would, I just... would like, I'd like that as my title, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, <laughs> actually, a hat with the title busiest unemployed person in the world. A sash, a um, sash. <laughs> I, th I think there's a lot of fellas are finding out at the moment as they work from home, the, the difficulty of looking after young children and working at the same time. And without being too sexist or, you know, manly, man type person about it, the truth is that if, if a woman's working from home, they tend to have the childcare and the cooking and everything to do as well. A men come home and cut the grass and bring the bins out and they think they've done a hard day's work. And I think there's a lot of men now, and I'm seeing it on the Zoom calls with little tots turning up, <laughs> pulling her and poking things and, and all this. You're, you're most supposed to be professional Zoom calls. How, how much work's actually involved in just being a mum? Mm -hmm. Never mind all the other stuff that, that's, lumbered, that's lumbered on top of that. So, well done, you. <laughs> like, there's so, like, I mean, this is the thing. People are doing it no matter where they're, whether they're working full time, if they're at home with their students, students like myself, mothers and fathers all over the world are doing this all the time. And I think there's going to be a much, there's much more recognition now of what is really happening in the home when there is yeah. children there. Yeah. And how much more of an effect we're having on our kids while being there. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things where that's the theme of tonight's talk is, um, what have been the positives that have come out of lockdown? Not out of COVID, obviously there's no positives out of the, uh, of the terrible disease, but the fact we've all been locked down for a while, there are positives that come out of that. And one of the positives is that I've got the opportunity to be here tonight with Alison and have a conversation with the wonderful Alison about the stuff that she's been up to during lockdown. But before we get into that, Alison, who are you? Who are, who's Alison the person? <laughs> Alison the person? Um... I am an auntie. I'm an auntie to two very cute and mischievous uh, boys who are three and five, Saul and Ruben. Um, I'm also a swimmer. I swim a lot uh, the whole year round in Loch Ness, which I know a lot of people think is pretty crazy because we swim without wetsuits um, even in the winter. 
And in the depths of December, we go and visit other crazy people like the Donaghy Chunky Dunkers and swim with them because it's a wee bit warmer <laughs> where they are. Um, and I love to be outside, but I'm not inside because I am. I have a very sort of office based. Um, job but when I'm not at my desk I just love to be outside and at the moment now that we have a bit of lockdown freedom I'm up the moorings and up the north coast and anywhere there is that I can put my hiking boots on and I think getting we swim in too all the better. I cannot get past or I'm not going to leave it alone Chunky Dunkers. <laughs> Chunky <laughs> Dunkers no we didn't make that name last <laughs> Don't like Donaghy Junkie Dunkers. <laughs> Donaghy Junkie have been called that for a long time, so it wasn't me that bad mouthing them saying that. <laughs> I, I just imagine this committee meeting where the, all the members were sitting around thinking, we have to think of a fantastic name. It's like um, Marty won a prize. My son won a prize. He was um, not won a prize. He, he, he had the privilege of getting to name his badminton club. So they all they all got to put in names, and he came up with carried off cobras, and his Thank name you. was selected. And it's on the shirt, and it's one of his one of his greatest um, things that he's proud of. And Michelle always says that she told him the name. <laughs> I never told me the name. <laughs> it's only a kid. So they came up with carried, and I just imagine that same conversation where people. Go, what was yeah. it said again? The Donaghy Chunky Dunkers. So it helps you save your swimming to actually be, to have a bit more insulation. I'd be fine now. Yeah, if you see him. Are you in training? Are you I would like that. I would be like a lino. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be safe enough. Um, that's brilliant. So that's you. You're, <laughs> I'm going to be stuck with Chunky Dunkers for, for I'm totally distracted with that. Who are you as the professional? The, who is the professional? The professional yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm a virtual assistant. I started my own business, Virtually Admin Solutions, May five years ago now. And I come from a, I actually did French and German as a degree, and then I did a postgrad diploma in business administration with modern languages. So I spent nearly 15 years abroad and using my foreign languages everywhere I could. And then I came back to Northern Ireland and decided to become self employed and <laughs> give myself a whole lot of new challenges. <laughs> as you do. I should do. I should do. Very, very good. And you've, you've been going now quite a while, I would imagine. Five years. Five years. Five years. Yeah. That is quite a quite a way mark in anybody's yeah. business. If you can survive five years, you can pretty much survive anything. Survive anything. <laughs> it's like that song about New York. Well, what's the thing with New, they say about New York, Catherine? Do you know what I'm talking if, about? If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. That's it. That's exactly the one that I was thinking of, and we didn't even prepare that. That wasn't I even can. scripted. That is absolutely brilliant. We small business, we business. That's not about Ireland. We business, we business. If you can survive for five years in small business, you can pretty much um, do anything. That's a brilliant introduction for the new book. Yeah, that's cheered me up. It's invigorated me. So that's I'm ready. I'm ready for more. I'm ready for more. And the topic of tonight's talk was um, or the general subject. We're going to talk about stuff generally, but the general topic was the positives of lockdown. And the question I'm going to put to you is, uh, how are people finding more focus, whether it's in their jobs, life, home, or ambitions? I'm not reading that from anywhere. Sure, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no idea where you could have got that from. <laughs> no idea. Catherine Muldoon. Um, do you have a good... <laughs> A good answer to that question about how, how lockdown is working out well for people. I mean, there's so many different ways. Like, I mean, I like I said at the very beginning, it, for, specifically for parents, it's been a whole new experience for them. Mm. I mean, it's everything from spending more time with their children, recognizing maybe things that are going well in their lives or not so well in their lives, and taking that time to work on those things. Mm -hmm. So, it, and it's also things like. I mean, so many companies are learning how to improve their skills and improve their um, or their or resor or human resources, really, finding out how people are working better from home. But I think coming from a parent point of view, um, it's really got me looking at how outside influences or what outside influences to have on me and on my children's opinions of themselves. So I find myself getting more and more productive because I'm not maybe considering or thinking about, well, what does that person think about me doing this now? Because I'm at home and I'm able to focus my time on doing that project. So 
if I'm not taking in, if I'm not worrying about um, John Joe down the road thinking, well, she shouldn't be as focused on this campaign or she should, why is she talking on a video online to people about what's making lockdown better? Then I'm able to do that and I'm not scared to do it anymore. Yeah. And I mean, that's been a massive change for me from way back in the day to now. I'm really finding a confidence in not worrying about other people. That's good. Or their you know, opinions anyway. <laughs> you know what? Um, one of the things I'm always aware of, when you're talking about on the video and what people are thinking of you and all the rest, and one of the things is when you see somebody doing this here, and they're looking away from the screen, or they're, they're sort of like they're looking studiously, and then the phone appears. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like they've been distracted and they're not listening. I am listening intently. The only reason I was briefly glancing away is that I see that we have people joining us on the wall. And part of the reason of doing it live is so that um, you know, people can contribute or ask questions or say hi or, or get involved if they so wish. It tends to be that a lot of that um, engagement happens on the watch party on Thursday nights, but people do um, get involved. And I see Michael Stewart has joined us. Michael Stewart is a a famous publican from, from Belfast and uh, has been responsible for managing and running some of the biggest venues in and around Belfast. And I know he will be very much looking forward to the reopening. As much as lockdown might have been good for some, it certainly hasn't been good for the hotels and restaurants. And I'm sure him and his team will be working very hard now to reopen. Um, I'm delighted to see also that um, Neve my heart, and I'm not sure if she's still there, but we, we all know Neve. Michael Hackman, yeah, Catherine, you would. Um, Neve's fantastic. I used to really enjoy going to her digital DNA. No, that's wrong name, isn't it? It's yeah. not digital yeah. DNA. <laughs> it's the, what is it called, that Catherine? The, the four letter things. D A N I. Is that? Oh, Danny, the yes, the Danny yes. event. Danny events. Danny events were some of the best events in. They were. In Danny were my um, one of my sponsors when I did the Rose of Trilly. Is that right? They were, yes. So when I went in for the Throne Rose, it was Danny and Digicom. I was the first ever entrant for the Rose of Chile that was sponsored by an online community. Brilliant. Well, that's that's just <laughs> one example of the many good things that Neve has done Absolutely. to develop entrepreneurialism and small business in Northern Ireland through those activities. Sadly, um, very sadly indeed, um, a very good friend of mine was Lear McKee. Um, Lear was actually, I have a, a lovely picture of at our 40th birth, my 40th birthday party down in the Dark Horse. Were you there that day, Alison? No, I couldn't be there. That was the day that you, you had a cake you didn't share it with anybody. That's well. right. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lovely cake. <laughs> so, like that size. So big I can't even get it on the screen. And... Uh, um, who was it caught me on the way out? There was a journalist seen a picture, seen, or seen me. Who was that? Uh, what did you call him? Brian, the, the guy who runs View Digital. I forget. Oh, Brian Murphy. Um, Keenan? Brian Keenan. Yeah. It's Keenan, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Feeling. Feeling. Keenan. Feeling. Anyway, Brian. <laughs> he's seen me and he Brian took Murphy. the picture and he shared it, shared it everywhere. So, that was a lovely day, but the last time I seen Lyra, and there's, there's a great picture of us, was I was leaving the last of those events, digital DNA, Danny. whatever it's called, Danny, that's the one, um, and it was down in Queens, and as I was walking out through the door, either Neve was talking to Lyra, and, and I just happened to be there, and we were having a laugh about someone, and we got a picture taken oh. and it's just a happy faces at that happy event and it's, it's one of my favorite pictures because it reminds me of some some very good times so uh, yeah yeah we've moved on since there and uh, but anyway back to the more positive note um Alison what do you find have been the positive sides of lockdown for you I think for myself and a lot of other people, it's we've had that time really to concentrate on the simple things in life and realize that it's the simple things that actually are the most important, like your health. And you know, 
we were in a very funny position family wise because my sister and her husband and her two little kids had just moved in with my mum because <laughs> they were building a house just before this all broke out so actually I saw them we continued to see them because I was looking after the boys a little bit and like I had such a laugh like because I am the mad auntie doing all those mad things like rolling around the garden and counting the ladybirds and all the rest and actually we had really quality time together and I think a lot of people would say that time that people have had at home with you know with their children or in my case with the nephews like that has just been beautiful and it has made a lot of people I think as well the sort of more maybe toxic things that were in your life really just to get rid of them because you think well I don't have time for this mm -hmm. and that's like even friendships maybe they're a bit toxic if you had a business and you had clients that were really sort of draining your energy luckily I wasn't in that position but if you had I think a lot of us have just gone you know what I don't need this anymore life life is too short and I think that was you know that's been the big lesson for us all because there was a stage I think that we were all very very scared and I you know even I thought oh my god we're all going to die we're all going to die we're not going to survive this yeah and I'm very positive so you know that was yeah there was a lot of learning for everybody do you know what actually There's a lot of anxiety I think yeah, I think that's the thing. Um, we, we didn't know at the start how serious this was going to be. I can remember um, having a conversation. I, I was out for, <laughs> I, you could call it a business lunch, but it wasn't really. It was me and I got a couple of friends. So it was, I was with um, a guy called Declan Barry, Kevin Young, and James Perry. And I see James is on tonight. Hi, James. Thanks for joining us this evening. And we were out on the first day, was it the first day of January? Or maybe it was the 31st of January. But anyway, we were talking about this thing that had come on the news. And I was still talking about how 2020 is going to be the best year of my life and it's going to be fantastic and it's going to be, this is the year for growth and yay, all this little did we know. And then all of a sudden, somebody decided the pubs have to close. And when they yeah. closed the pubs, everything closed. Just like, yeah. bang, roads were empty. No one had a reason to go anywhere. Shops were closed, streets. You, you sort of didn't even know if you should have been leaving the house. You know, it really yeah. was that, is it legal for me to leave the house? Yeah. And then I, um, Michelle and I went to, so we live outside down Patrick, about five miles outside down Patrick, and we decided we had to go and risk our lives for a pint of milk and a loaf of bread, as we all do. <laughs> we were going to Tesco's or wherever we're going, so we're driving into the shops in down Patrick, and the police stopped us on the road. Um, good evening, sir. Can I have your driving license, please? And can you please let me know where you're going? You do realize, I was like, oh my goodness, this is yeah, serious. Yeah. So it, it was, you're absolutely right, Alison. There was, there was a period there when we didn't know where it was going to go, but yeah. it was great. And I, I agree with you, it was great for that, being able to really get to know your family again in a, in a yeah. way. Like people may think that Michelle and I um, talk all the time non-stop because we work together but we do talk but a lot of it's about work yeah. you know you're thinking all the time about what's happening next and who you need to talk to and when the next meeting is and scheduling diaries and, and we do different things in practice as well so i do a lot of this obviously yeah everybody sees a lot of me the reason you don't see michelle is because she's doing her stuff you know work, work. <laughs> i was trying to avoid that yeah we all know the truth we all know the truth of the matter is what uh, she, she's doing work now figuring away in the background keeping us all fed and watered but um yeah it was nice to lose the travel and as much as i love networking client meetings you know what the, the break from it for a while has made me realize you know what there's a lot of time to be doing other things so i i think i think you're absolutely right Austin. i think that's a really good answer now during lockdown some people have done better than others you know, for whatever reason, some people just have been lucky where their business has been. And some people have been really unlucky. Like if you were a hairdresser or um, a beautician or, uh, you know, someone that, a musician, you know, a performer, um, a coach, a lot of those people, their work just finished overnight. One of the funny professions that are jobs and um, that a client has come to me and told me that they're doing really well is delivery driving. Mm. because deliveries went through the roof and there was no one on the roads you know and they were you know, bombing along they, they was all, all going really well but one of the things that happened was that there were a lot of grants brought in so furloughing and uh, the seiss grants and the small business rate relief grants and all this type of stuff so people were getting money in 
And some people have got nothing at all, but some people have done very well. But if you average it, say 5,000 pounds was the average amount that came in. And this is maybe an unfair question, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious. If you had an extra 5,000 pounds to spend on your business right now, that came in the post from the grants people for COVID. Given where we are and given where your business is now or where, where, where your career is now, what would you do with that £5,000? And Alison, I'm going to ask you first. Well, obviously, the first thing I'd have to do is ask my accountant what the best thing to be doing with the business in the market. Excellent response. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, obviously. Um, I, what would I do with it? Well, I, it was funny because I, just at the start of the whole lockdown thing, I was actually in Sweden. On a, on a business mastermind <laughs> and when I came back I realized that actually having a business mentor especially at this time was probably one of the most important things you could do so in the midst of this all I actually hired a business mentor because I thought even if that is money and some of my HMRC money went to that because I kind of thought that will be an investment for me for the future and I'll, I'll, I'll get it back. And I've seen a lot of people actually doing really, really well in lockdown, including musicians. I have a friend who's a musician who, um, who is now doing Zoom guitar lessons online and is teaching people yeah. all around the world. Wow. So, you know, if, you're, if you have the drive, you can do anything. Um, but definitely, I think investment in the business, the other thing that I would have to say, you know me, I love a bit of a party. I think I would definitely have to have a bit of a party. <laughs> I had 5,000 and a, a big party in Belfast and give you know some trade back to the Belfast hoteliers and the publicans and all the rest and okay. just invite all the small business party and we'd have that big cake Martin <laughs> a big gluten <laughs> free cake in my case a gluten free well you can have two cakes I, I think you, can have, cakes. you have to look after the, the full gluten people you know there are, there are full gluten people in the world so you have to look after them very good very good yeah. Catherine Five thousand pound, you can spend it whenever you want in your business sort of context. What would you do with it? So I suppose because I'm currently still studying, a lot of it will probably have to go again into um, improving my development that way. So a lot of um, CPD and stuff like that. So um, I'd really love to specialise in a few different things. So I'm really looking into doulaship, which is um, a person who is a companion for mothers, and I have a specific interest in postnatal. So that's somebody who comes into your home after you've had your baby and helps you within the home. So it could be doing the washing, doing the cooking, assisting you with breastfeeding if that's what you're interested in. So I'd really want to be doing specialisms within that. But I think the majority of the money would probably be going investing into technology to ensure that I can provide support for parents all over the world because this world is just getting smaller. And if anything that the lockdown has proven is that people can, can work online and people can be supported online. Um, so I think my money would go into improving the technology that I have um, and also increasing my knowledge base. You know what, Catherine, I think you've really touched on something important there, that after birth, when the baby comes home for the first time, I, I don't know if it's, we've only ever had one, we only have one child, so I don't know what it's like to have two or three and what it's like if it's easier when the second one comes home or, or harder, but there certainly is a shock to the system when you bring that first baby home mm -hmm. for the mother and the father, but you know, 100%. for the mother because you're exhausted. There's Michelle, and I actually, Michelle, and I were actually talking about this the other day, driving along the car for some reason. I, I'm not sure what, what I can't remember why the subject came up, but it was about how, um, when you're pregnant and it's the first baby, everybody's looking at you and everybody's talking to you and everybody's excited for you and oh, the bump and how are you and blah blah blah. And then the baby's born and you disappear. Yeah. And everybody's looking at the baby and going, oh, baby, baby. And the mummy's just, <laughs> what happened? <That's>, yeah. <laughs> where, where am I? And you um, know what? There's the same as well for the father as well. I mean, there's so much mental health um, for um, men post-birth as well. There's not been a lot of research done into it. Mm -hmm. But particularly for men, there's a lot of um, a need for support there. But for mothers, like you said, for bo in both times, or if, no matter how many children they have, it changes and there's a spiral of, um, removal of support for a lot of parents um, so it, it's a lot about that there's a real need for somebody that you trust to be there and somebody who is separate from your family because so much of what family does is give their opinion and in 
in every one in the world, a lot of it is very specific to them. It's anecdotal to themselves because they have experienced it in a different way from, from how you're experiencing it. There's no child that has read any of those parenting books when they're born. So there's nobody that's experiencing exactly what you're going through at that time. And if you can have somebody that's nearby that you can say, okay, today's not a great day. Yeah. And, and they can hold that burden for that day. I mean, I think that's what's going to really help with mm. maternal and paternal mental health. It helps if you've got good family around you and, and parents are able to step in and help, but not everybody has that all the time. Um, sometimes parents are still young and they've got their own issues going Absolutely. on, like they're still teenagers at home or something maybe, or maybe they're not close by. And it, it I, I, and you're talking about the, fortunately, Michelle was fully able to cope, which is like, like yourself, um, Catherine, she was a natural mother, really, really enjoyed it, didn't have postnatal depression or anything, thankfully. And uh, it was the whole experience was really. When I look back on it now, it was a, it was a wonderful time. And it's, 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 in some instances, you wish you could go back. But I remember the the day Mar- Marty was born, and all that excitement built up. And then there's the birth of the baby and all the rest. I have to go home after that, and you go home by yourself, and you go to bed knackered, you know, because of all the excitement, the emotional energy. And you're sort of lying there, not able to get to sleep. Yeah, the baby isn't home yet. Your wife isn't home yet. You're lying by yourself. And it was three or four days before Michelle got home. And it's frightening because all of a sudden you realize you've got this big responsibility that you're going to have for the rest of your life. And there's no turning back now. You know, you've, 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 made, your, you've made your bed and you've got this kid and it's your, you have to make your happen. So, uh, no, absolutely brilliant. That is, that is, uh, that's just actually coming in, coming in on that there's something that's happening at the moment um so birthwise one of the charities that i'm working with um specifically because of covid um there's a lot of mothers that are going in to give birth on their own because either their their partner is um shielded or they have older children and they have nobody to look after because their families are um yeah. social distancing and all those sorts of things so there's actually a, a program right now where mothers who are, are facing the the chance of the prospect of giving birth alone that they can have a birth doula uh, provided to them by birthwise um to be there with them during birth and also in the lead up to prepare them for it so if anybody's interested in that just check out birthwise.org.uk yeah and certainly either mess dm me or or catherine or or send a message or i said that that's very good before we go on to the next question alison you can prepare yourself you can take a moment to to rest maybe have a sup of tea or whatever it is you're doing between these questions i just want to say we'll do a few more people come on and we have david mckeown and david mckeown isn't only a talented artist in his own right but he is a much more talented son (laughs) he has (laughs) he has just um graduated from university with a first in the arts and I think it's it's um what do you call it? painting arts and he's also a, a marvelous musician as well so um David must have married a very talented wife but thanks for joining us David <laughs> it's good good to have you here um we let us see now who else is here and Keith Truman and um, Keith um is a tech background type of guy but he's also in the process of opening up his own new um, accountancy practice in the south so f- specifically focused on businesses operating in the south and i wish him all the very best of good luck with that piece he's, he's entering into what i would consider to be a very enjoyable career indeed so them and others i am also aware that i am not seeing everybody that comes up in the wall due to the marvels of modern technology so if you're watching this and if you're enjoying the conversation with Catherine and Alison, and i am not reading out your posts or giving you a shout out I apologize. I'm sure we'll catch up later on. Alison and Catherine, if you can see people that I can't and you think that they deserve, uh, they all deserve a shout out and they're not getting mentioned, let me know. You know, during your question or answer, say, just just let, let, tell us that they're there and what they're asking about. And moving on, moving swiftly on, as time flies when you're having fun, but um, Alison, how do you, and I apologize if you've answered this in some way already, but you can, you can take it at a different angle if you want. How do you continue to learn in order to stay on top of things within your role, particularly during lockdown? Yeah. And um, I think being a virtual assistant, you're always, you're always continuously learning because not only am I learning to do things differently in my own business, but because I help business owners streamline their own business, I'm always looking at new technologies and 
new ways people can do things. So that's just part of my business in a way. But I have to say down, during lockdown, especially sort of April, May time, I ran my own five day get organized challenge that I did via Facebook. And then I just got a wee bit obsessed by challenges and I did about five or six <laughs> online things. And I also signed up for Irish lessons at Queen's because Queen's did like lockdown languages, I think they called it, where they were offering French and German and Spanish. There was a couple, there was about five languages for free. And I didn't do Irish at school. And it annoys me, as a language sort of nerd, it annoys me, you know, when I see signs in Irish and I think I don't understand anything. So that's what that's what I, I'm doing at the moment. I've only learned that I've, I've got like one to ten, please don't ask me. <laughs> I can get past about three at the moment. But um yeah. I, I'm I'm like one of those people like a seminar junkie, you know, that who just wants to be online learning all the time, but you have to realise that you do have to do some work in between. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you must enjoy languages. And my my, my mum was a French teacher, and it was the only GCSE I failed, which is yeah. to my perpetual embarrassment. I'm sure my mum was not too pleased either. But it wasn't her fault. It's just that I literally am dyslexic when it comes to to language um, generally. And you're now you ha you have three languages already, and now you're learning Irish as well. Is it just a love for the language, or is it? Well, I don't think I'll ever be fluent. I don't think I'll be ever fluent. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I'll be fluent. It's just, it was curiosity. It was curiosity. Pretty good. <laughs> that's that's taking curiosity about. Well, while, while I've got you there, um, James Perry has a question for you specifically, Alison. And he asked. Is it in if, Irish? <laughs> <laughs> if, do you know what? He should have put it in Irish. No, no, no. Uh, he asked, <laughs> "Have you any top tips on how to keep productive, especially if working from home?" Yes, um, I actually I did a video for this back at the very start of lockdown because because I've always worked from home. You know, I've never it has never really been a big challenge for me because I just had to get down to it. But I think I'll put the link up for the video that I did do actually back in the day. But I think definitely you need to have a structure. You need to have a structure. I won't go through them all, but you need to have a structure, and you also need to very carefully plan your breaks and your food. And I think people forget that a lot about like you have to have nutritious things, you know, to be eaten on. And if you can, do not work beside the fridge. <laughs> I work upstairs away from the fridge. <laughs> Otherwise, I dread to think um, what I would be like now. <laughs> OK, that's very good. Productive tips. Don't go anywhere near the fridge. OK, okay yeah. fair. <laughs> fair enough. Here, um, the other thing is we have to behave ourselves now because I can see the, the boss is online this evening. Michelle is watching and she's <laughs> obviously been watching for a while because she said we had cake for weeks <laughs> after my 40th birthday. So that's the secret of a happy 40th birthday. Don't give anybody cake, you know, it's, keep, keep it all for yourself. Catherine, um, if you could have, do you know, Belfast and Shaftesbury Square where all the pubs are, Lavery's and when I was going, that used to be bishops that you go for your fish and chips after the next day. And it used to be called the M Club. I'm not sure what it's called now, but it's, I'm just showing my age here. <laughs> I don't know the name of it. Anymore. But there's a big, massive screen as you're kind of out of town. If you could have that big screen and put anything onto it now, what would it be and why? Oh, I've got two, two ways my brain could go with it. Um, I think the first one would probably be that I would love to have information about um, contact, or people listed to contact um, for mothers and for fathers, um, having places where they can go and information about what it's really like being a parent. Um, so things about what you, the local area has for provisions, if you're going to have a birth, if, you're, if you want to have a home birth, things like that there, the things that are available to you. And I think the other thing I would really love is to have positive affirmations out there. Things that people, that anybody, doesn't matter who you are, can look up and grasp something from it. So whether that is you are enough or something a bit more specific, I'd love to have something like that that people can really, really take ownership over for themselves. Yeah, brilliant. What about you, Alison? <laughs> well, I would have to agree with Catherine with that, from that point of view, because I think, I think during the lockdown there was an awful... There was this very much beer based, you know, whole thing going on in the mainstream media. And I think it would be much better if we'd actually had a screen that did, you know, that had affirmations like that or 
like, I lived in Luxembourg for 10 years and in the summertime, like, there was a lot of money obviously in Luxembourg, but the government had free outdoor exercise classes for everybody in the summertime. And I always think, goodness, wouldn't it be great if you had people doing Tai Chi or Qi Kong, I used to do a lot of Qi Kong, outside in the city hall and that people were doing that at lunchtime and especially, actually especially with the coronavirus, that people were out and doing exercises to improve their immunity and you know that whole message about your health and how and how to improve your own immune system was out there rather than just terrifying people to stay in and eat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as I say, it's a really perfect. Yeah. yeah. I, I often thought that I would love to uh, have, this is what I love, just people like us sitting down and talking about the stuff that's happening in the real world. I, I, I sort of get overwhelmed or, um, I'm, I'm not sure what the word was, but I used to always, people, like I came from a corporate environment when it was like a big, big businesses, like the, the, the level of sort of Deloitte, Deloitte, Deloitte. And the PwC, that sort of level, that sort of environment, I never felt comfortable with that big. Or, like, first of all, the men were like six foot two and wearing big suits and power plays and all that type of stuff. I, I prefer talking to people that are just like like me. And I often think that if I had control of that screen, yes, there has to be advertising that gets paid for it, but between the adverts, I would love to see small businesses like ours get an opportunity to do like a 30 second profile. Obviously, there's no sound. But the same way when you read stuff on Facebook, you know when you see a wee video playing, you can't hear it, but you yeah. can see the text. Okay, yeah. Just something like that there where whatever message it was that you wanted to get out either about your business or your um, community, but it's a business related, you know, that sort of small sense of small business community and just have them playing between the adverts. So we all get this CRE faces popping up. And if you knew what time you were coming up, you could do something with it. You could be there with your Facebook Live and go, there's me, look at me. Or, or all this type of stuff, or to message someone to, to actually have, you know, to bring somebody on and say hi and, and that type of stuff. Rather, that just just having those wee personal interactions, I think, would be a, a lovely thing. Community screen. recognition as well. It's kind of for somebody to walk past and go, I know that person. Exactly, exactly, and to, to see it on there and get shared. Rather, it's just been a a bland ad for Volkswagen or Coke mm -hmm. or or whatever it is, They're just to fit that that stuff in there as well. I'm not going to say how long we know each other, but certainly <laughs> since Culture Tech, when yeah. I was we even at university then it was it was a long oh no I was I was long gone out of university at that stage. were you I was wow well, yeah I'd already done my masters and everything at that stage yeah I um, was yeah I'm I'm much older than you think I am Martin <laughs> must be must yeah, be but, but we'll, we'll not we'll not delve into that <laughs> and, I think and, we. We met back before, back in one social media for business, way back then. Really? <laughs> yeah. My goodness. I was much quieter back then, though. I was much, much quieter back then. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, um, that was way back. Before, like, yeah, it was like sliced, there was, I had to, even to the even of sliced bread back then. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. That's, that's not funny. <laughs> and Alison, you've been about from Culture Tech as well. I know you were saying earlier on to Catherine. <laughs> I Is think, right? I was just trying to remember that, I actually think that we met Martin probably one Dawn, when Dawn and Alan Bird were doing their co-working events. I think that's when we first met. Yeah, they were lovely We get together. Yeah. Very, very personable mm -hmm. and personal. So, yeah. the question is, Alison, we'll start with you. Just how has life changed in that period, do you think, for you? Well, and, and we're talking about the big changes. What, what would you see as the substantive changes that have happened since then in your business, your world, your life? <laughs> Jesus, that's a big question. <laughs> um, do you think I'm any wiser, Martin? I don't know. I, I do be wiser? I, I do. You don't? I do. You do, you do. I do. Oh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> you've, been, you've been a successful yeah. businesswoman running your own business for five years. So you think it's, Luke, you think that's Luke. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I definitely got a bit wise. I think I was very naive when I started out. It was, you know, you know. I remember one of the first posts I put up was um, it was some funny meme about um, you know when you build your website, you think everybody's going to come and just you know going to start buying services from you and that's going to be you. And I, I actually didn't think that. <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm just going to put a post up and that's going to be it. 
Um, so I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot, but I've been very lucky because I think one of the first events I ever went to actually was that co-working event that Dawn organized in Newcastle with you and Eve Early and all those people. And I was very lucky because at the very start, I surrounded myself by really, really good people. And I think that's the thing that has saved me through the coronavirus because I had a really, really good support network of friends and of business people um that is the thing that you know that definitely has got me through the last five years and has helped me succeed because oh my goodness there's so much stuff i was absolutely clueless about <laughs> yes yeah. mm -hmm. so you would say the big change is you've become more experienced generally yeah, and I think it's a thing as well that I'm not afraid to ask for help. And I think that was something very hard for me at the start that even if I didn't know how to do things, I was afraid to ask for help or sort of be a bit vulnerable. And now I, I realise that that's the only way that you actually can grow to realise what you're not good at and, you know, to upskill yourself or to, to hire in or, you know, ask the advice of other people who are. Yeah, like your good is. self, which is why I hired you at the very start. Yep, so much fun, so much fun. Yeah, well, thank you very, thank you very much. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't going to make anything, but thank you. It's always nice. It's always nice when you appreciate it. Um, Catherine, a lot of things. Is, I'm, a, I'm a completely yeah, yeah, different no. person now. Yeah, you are. Um, I suppose a little bit of background on who I was back then. I was a very, um, I was working in marketing and in digital. So I was, I started off as. A digital project officer for Southwest College. I then went to South by Southwest as part of the Northern Ireland um, group that went across and met um, some of the or met Brita and started my own company. And we won seed up competition when we came back because we just came up with an idea while we were out in the middle of Austin. Um, and we did that for a while. And um, I talked all over the world talking about marketing and about startups and things like that. Um, and then I worked for an amazing tech company up in Belfast and now, or, and then I got married and I started having kids and I found a whole new passion for support from parents um, and, we, and trying to find a, um, a way to, keep, or to fill in the gaps that are out there at the moment in support. So my intention in life has completely changed, but I think my passion is still there. And the whole thing is I've always wanted to support people in doing what they are loving to do. So um, there's still a thread through there of I'm connecting people, I'm supporting people, and I'm helping, I'm helping other people's lives. Um, the biggest change is that I'm a mum now, and I have so much more confidence in what I'm able to do myself. I mean, a lot of what I, when I was younger, it was very much, I'm doing this because this is my job, and this is what people expect of me, and I need to be able to prove myself in these ways. And now what I'm doing is I'm really making a difference because I can see the difference is happening and I have confidence in myself to do that. So yeah, that's my biggest change, confidence. I think one of the things you touched on there, Catherine, was um, supporting other people. And I have to say, even though we haven't seen each other in the flesh, as it were, for years, years. now. Five no, no, years? Oh, sorry, no, four years, literally this week, because it was at Oh My Enterprise. Yes, oh, yeah, that was a great day as well. That was, I, I, think, I think um, that was the first outing um, with the wee Volkswagen van that was just brand new. Yeah, that's right, and I, yeah. I, I, Denise Cowan came with me that day. It was that's brilliant. Right. Was that the one with Darrell Conway? It was, it was yes. That was class that day. It was day. A brilliant. I was, I was doing the social media that day. I was doing the posts for it that day. And it was it was so, so interesting. And that's, it was always brilliant because you knew that Martin was going to be straight up there with the first question. I, do you know what? I was just going to say, I've got a, I have a fantastic picture from that day. That somebody, yeah. I'm trying to remember who it was, took from the stage. So I was in the audience and I stood up to ask a question. I'm like, this year will be a <laughs> question. And someone from the, from the podium took a picture of me. <laughs> And it wasn't a photographer, it was one of the, one of the panelists. The panelists. Going, who's this guy? <laughs> I think it was just they were prepared, they were ready for that question. They knew it was coming. Something yeah. was coming from Martin and they, they, they were ready to take a snapshot of that moment yeah, if they got to answer a question moment. from Martin. Go, Chris. Yeah, that, that magic, is that how long have I been doing that course? Four years. <laughs> um, anywho, yes, so, yes, and it's amazing. That's the amazing thing about this technology. We're, we're talking here today partly because we have been able to stay in touch across Facebook, 
all those years without actually having to be physically present. And you have been able to give me, just as Alison has over the years, loads of support. And, and, and when people come on and they make nice comments and they share it, like you share it, quite a bit of my stuff when I post it up and, and engage in, in posts and conversations and stuff, that stuff's more valuable than, than you actually think. When you're, when you're just making that when you post on the page, you maybe don't think about that much about it. But the value of that builds over a lot of time because what it does is it means that we can maintain those connections. So you've gone away, you've got married, you've had two kids, you've changed your career, you've done all this stuff, and we're still in touch because of the connection on social media. And Alison, although we may work together, you know, we don't see each other every week. You know, I, I don't no. remember the last time, that's a terrible thing to say, I don't remember the last time we met up face to face. No. But we're still able to work together. You know, you were able to see that I was doing this. We were able to make arrangements to go online and have this wee chat. Um, incredibly, incredibly valuable. Um, so that's how life has changed since we first met Catherine. Awesome. What, what, what's changed? What's, what's changed? Yeah. What's changed? I think, well, I'm still, I'm still, you know, still the virtual assistant, but I think what I'm, what I'm doing really has changed. And I kind of, at the start, I was doing very, very general things. And now I, I, a lot of my clients actually are offering online courses or events. And so for a lot of a lot of my work now is more about event coordination in the background. And then I started up last year with um I started a collaboration actually last year with three other virtual assistants and we have our own little membership group now called the Fearless Freelancers and we're helping sort of mentor um mostly the Fearless Freelancers. The Fearless Freelancers. <laughs> Fearless, like, as in no beard. Fearless, fearless. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're all ladies, we're all, all so fearless. That's what I thought you meant. Um, I thought that's yeah. where I'm here from, the beardless freelancers, as in all yeah. freelancers. Like it could be an alternative name. <laughs> uh, that alternative. would have been another brilliant name. So the first one was uh, the pudgy, what do you, what do you call the... The chunky dunk and the beardless freelancers. Oh, oh, that was fun. You have to use that. You have to change the name of your business. You might have to change your name. You might have to change your yeah, name. That's, that's, that's a new but, brand, definitely. Anyway, yeah, sorry, I, I put it across Yeah, you. so we're, we're sort of, we're helping new virtual assistants set out in Northern Ireland because when I started, you know, everybody, even when I started, like I went to do like a course with a lady who was a virtual assistant in England who'd been going for about 10 years and that was even about six years ago. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't that much, you know, there, there are some people in Northern Ireland obviously who've been going for a long time, but we've started that in the last year and it's great, you know, because I, like I did the Women in Business um, Power Forward program when I started out and it's, it's sort of, it's mad to think now that me and some other people are, are mentoring newbies as well. It's, you know, yeah. it's, we've come sort of the virtuous circle there. <laughs> yeah. So the what what is it? The apprentice is now the master. As it were. <laughs> it's a scary yeah. thought. <laughs> I, as as I told you before we started this, that uh, I always try to keep these talks to half an hour, and they always run on far longer should be, which is entirely my fault. But there's two more questions that I want to ask, and I'm going to, I'm going to ask is one each, and then we'll go to the final one because you don't want to let these last, no matter how good they are and how much we might be enjoying ourselves. <laughs> It's, it's hard for anybody else to listen for, for an hour conversation. But honestly, I have enjoyed it. It has flown, and I, I didn't realize until I checked the clock there how much time it's been in. And uh, thank you very much for your, for your time tonight. But um, Catherine, what profession other than you own, your own would you like to attempt? So if you were to do something else, what would you do? Well, it's kind of in line with what I'm doing now, but I would love to be a midwife, I think. I would love to be part of, or, or something within the medical profession that is supporting mothers. Um, that or, I mean, virtual assistant and events, virtual events and stuff like that there, I would love to be able to be working in that again as well. So maybe some sort of amalgamation of the two would, it's probably possibly down the line, that's where I'll head as well. But yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. That's where I would the, be if I wasn't current. where I am right now. In the caring sector, and then yeah, what what is it you call it when you're looking after children? Is that well, pediatrics? Pediatrics. That's what Michelle always says. Michelle always says that if she wasn't an accountant, she would. 
either want to be a teacher or when she was younger she wanted to be a pediatric doctor so she wanted to yeah. to do that sort of stuff but uh, she became an accountant thank goodness it gave me a career for life. <laughs> exactly. everything worked out well. um exactly Alison what do you wish you had known when you'd started what do you know now that you'd wish you'd known five years ago when you started this I think I didn't I didn't realize at all how important mindset was to run your own business and I think you know I was employed before that and my dad like we grew up on a farm my dad was a farmer and I always understood the power of networking and having that support team because when you're a farmer you have you're, you're always relying on other people to help you out but I never really understood and it's only really very recently as well that I've understood the real power of like affirmations and visualizing where you're going to go and changing your mindset around money and all those things that you're never taught like when are you taught any of those things you're not and it's such a shame because I think really we should be taught a lot of that in school and maybe that will change now when a lot of parents actually are homeschooling their children more that some of those skills will come out as well. Yeah, I think, I think they, they are. You're absolutely right, Alison. They are so important because a lot of businesses don't fail. It's that their owners give up. They just run yeah. out of energy and steam and strength and resolve and they just can't do it anymore and because they don't have the resources or the tools or the support in place. To keep them going and particularly with new start businesses one thing to become a partner in a professional practice and then you know the other partners die or leave and you're left with a practice or to go into a family business all those things are still tough but if you're starting a new business from absolute scratch you're not familiar with it and you happen to be the, the credit controller and the advertiser and the marketer and the dishwasher and the person who locks the shop at the end of the day that is incredibly exhausting it's literally like having a baby it is literally like it is like exactly the same or it's, it's like being as being a part of a startup is exactly or very similar to being a new parent because you don't know you know what's you think you know what's coming mm -hmm. it can change at any second mm -hmm. and it's everything that you, you're pushing all of your passion into it yeah so and I, Alison so my yeah yeah that's you're absolutely right Catherine but Alison in, as part of your mentoring group type thing is that the sort of stuff you do as well do you just help you it, it is yeah and yeah, it is because we like we had someone actually who did a thing about um she actually did a court a little mini course with us about charging with confidence and about you know knowing your own worth and how much you should charge and, and that's a massive thing that's a massive thing you know like i was getting paid about 10 pounds an hour when i was 10 pence when i started out in my business i thought well if i charged about 15 pounds an hour that would be okay. And then you soon realize about six months down the line, that's not going to cover anything. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then you have to think, what am I going to do if I'm sick? Or, you know, yeah, absolutely. have a bad month. And, you know, there, there's just so much to learn. I, I love or it. I love COVID. that. Or there's a COVID, COVID. <laughs> or there's a COVID or an Icelandic volcano disrupts yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's that for what you wish you'd done. Mm, yeah. Very good. Okay, we're on the very last question, and uh, I just want—I really don't want to end, but we're we're going to have to. And this is to both of you. So I'll do it to Catherine first. What have I not asked you that I should have? Um. Oh, yeah. You covered quite a lot there. Um. I think what, something that I probably would love to share is a lot of the stuff that we're doing with um Birthwise. So um, I'm. A trustee on the Birthwise Committee. It's a brand new charity. Well, it's, we're just coming up to the year um, of the launch in September. Um, and what we're doing there is we're supporting parents all over Northern Ireland. Um, and we're doing everything from antenatal groups um, and supports. We're, we've got this, the COVID support for birth support for parents to be at the moment. Um, and we're doing things like online Zoom. So we're doing things like uh, Zoom, sorry, online virtual support. So um, I run the breastfeeding group on a Wednesday morning to support anybody who is interested in breastfeeding um, before they have their child, who is breastfeeding, who's been breastfeeding for years. Um, have you been talking to Jenny Wallace about that? Je Jenny is amazing because she's part of the creators of um, Breastable um, yep. and she's absolutely incredible. Um, and we are working alongside with 
restful for some stuff hopefully for this year's virtual group yeah so oh, Jen, um, Jen is fantastic yeah she's unreal absolutely amazing and especially for the community of breastfeeders in northern ireland i mean it's something that i'm really really passionate about um and i think that there's so much that could be done to support it i mean there's just been a news news re release that um is actually breastfeeding can reduce the chance of ovarian cancer by 20 percent um and that's only if, if you feed your child for the first six months i believe and every time if you drink or if you feed your child beyond the 12 months it doubles and doubles and doubles and it depends on how many children you have as well so there's so much out there of what could be done about breastfeeding for northern ireland out there and that's what i'm hopefully pushing for but yeah have a look for birthways and, and also i would love to ask you a question martin as well what advice yeah i know what advice would you be given to charities like community groups um right now to help with fundraising or getting out and talking to people about what they do the the thing that people don't realize about the charitable sector and the not-for-profit sector is that the environment for raising funds for that sector is just as ruthless if not more so than what it is in the private sector or the prof board profit sector because funds are always tight and there, there is, although they're charitable, charitable organizations aren't there to compete. If they don't compete for funding, they don't have funding, they can't do the thing that they need to be able to do. So charities are hard work. They're, they're essentially, although they're giving all their money away or, or they're, they're using it for the purpose for which they're created, which is fantastic. If they don't have money, they can't do anything or, or they're, they're certainly going to be very limited. I think charities for my hard nosed stance would be they just have to be like businesses and this isn't the time to be sitting back and waiting for the, st the storm to pass because you sit back and wait the storm will pass and it'll take the house with it and you've got nothing you really need to be upping the conversation the communication the connections and um, monitoring the cash flow and um, strengthening the relationships and all that type of stuff now so that when the machine does start to grind back into action you're at least still on your feet rather than flatten your back but if you're still flatten your back everybody else is going to trample over you on the way on the way as the, the economy picks up so charities have to keep on fighting a good fight like like everybody else and keeping themselves out there and, and in front of people and everything else would be my suggestion but then what would i know <laughs> yeah. Alison, what should I have asked you but I didn't? Um, you could maybe ask me what I'm speaking at next and what value added I'm bringing to small business owners this week. Thank you. <laughs> um, so myself and the VA Heroes are speaking on Thursday at the Biz Marang Online Summit which is called Getting Ready for the Next Normal. And we'll be speaking all about how businesses can streamline their processes and be at their most efficient. Um, and the tickets for that are visit, uh, available via the Bismarang Facebook page, if anybody hasn't got one already. And I suppose in that vein as well, Martin, I would ask you, what, what is the best bit of advice that you could give businesses to actually cope through a crisis and to be I don't know, I suppose structured enough that no matter what crisis comes along that they can weather it. Um, you always, no matter where you are, it's a bit like fame, you know, you never know how long it's going to last. When businesses are running and things are good, you never know how long that good period is going to last. And you have to assume that it will come to an end at some stage. Recessions come and go, they're, they're, they're like the, as the sun will rise and the sun will set. Recessions are the same. You'll have good years and you'll have bad years. And just because there's a countrywide recession doesn't mean to say that your business is in recession. And just because the account, the company's booming, it doesn't mean to say that your your company or your business will be booming. So you need to put, um, you need to make hay while the sun's shining. But you need to put a, you know, have to fill the barn full of that hay as well. You know, get a bale and get it into the shed and get it stored. To leave the cliches aside what i'm talking about is managing your cash flow so yeah. if i was starting right now and with i've said this to i've told this story about a hundred times i don't want to spend too long getting over it but if you imagine your cash flow cash flow in business they, they say cash is king and it's absolutely true it's the most important thing in business having cash 
once a business runs out of cash, now it doesn't have to be your own cash, it can be, it can be credit, but once you run out of the access to cash, your business is in real trouble. So what you need to do is know how much money you have now, say that was 10,000 pounds, and you have to know how long that money has to last you if the worst possible thing happens. So okay. say for example, you got COVID, and you were one of those people who were wiped out for four months, and then it takes another two months or three months of business to recover. So say there's 10 months, so yeah, it's essentially the year you're not going to earn that money. How long would that £10,000 last? You know, what's your burn rate? So if your burn rate's a £1,000 a month, it's going to last you 10 months, okay? And if you think 10 months is enough, you know, that's okay. Generally, what I would be saying is, and this would be a luxury for any business, but if you can have it, you should really have something like 16 to 18 months of access to cash. That isn't money necessarily sitting in the bank account, but that's your bounce back loan fund. That's possible credit card resources. Could be an overdraft facility with the bank. Money that you're never, ever, ever, ever going to touch. Yeah. But if you have to touch it, at least it's there. Yeah. Have that in your plan. And it, yes, we're in COVID now, and if people are coming to me and saying, look, I have enough money, I've got 10,000 pounds in the bank. I would go, well, what happens if there's a deep recession? Go and get the bounce mm -hmm. back loan fund. Stick it away somewhere where you'll not touch it. Don't spend it. And then in 10 months time when you're right, and you can say, yeah, I told you I was going to be okay. Pay the money back. Much better that than 10 months you come to me and say, Martin, I need that 10,000 pounds because the creditors at the door and they're taking away my sausage yeah. machine or whatever it is that they're taking away from the business that you need to operate. And uh, you don't have the money. So if I was uh, out of all the things, and there's lots of different little bits of advice, you know, do a cash flow forecast, know how much you need, and get the provision in place now, long before you need it, rather than have the difficulty of um, yeah. sorting that out. When you, when you get there. So there you go. Did, it, did I give you an opportunity to answer the question? Is there anything? Should, yes, I did. And it was, <laughs> yes. I, I did. That's right, because I was going to come back. I knew I was going to come back. That. So there's that's Guy and Shane's Bismarck event, and it, it's going to be on Thursday night. I was going to ask you, is that a panel then yeah. that you are having? Will, will you... Will, um, Myself, no, there's a panel earlier on in the day, so it's an all day event. Um, Stephen Lusty, um, Mark Dowds, Gavin Wall, and Arnie Van Oostrum, if I said that correctly, are speaking earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's going to be a brilliant event. And I have to say that, even though I don't want to, because the whole reason I'm able to use this webinar feature today is due to the generosity of Guy and Shane, who yes. let me use their high, high powered advanced and very expensive software for free. So thank you guys, Shane. I hope you have a, yeah, no, I, I hope you have a very successful day on Thursday and I'll certainly be there supporting. Okay, we have gone way past the hour. We've doubled the hour and a bit. So for anybody that's on Facebook watching at the moment, you're going to be the first to come off. Um, ladies, please stay on Zoom after I finish this and finish the recording. I just want to thank you probably before we all go a better way. But to anybody who's watching on Facebook, and it's thought to yourselves, and I apologize, I apologize to Eve early. I know you've been trying to get on, but you haven't been able to reach out. I've seen, I've seen your messages come through, and hopefully you'll see this in playback. Um, I will have to bring you on, and we'll have to have you on for a conversation because Eve was one of the protagonists of BizCamp, which has been one of the most fundamental and important business networking conferences to Gilchrist & Co. over all the years we've been in business. So we'd definitely love that be one. To everybody else, if you've been watching this, if you've enjoyed it, and you thought, you know, I would love to go out for a wee chat. You know, I haven't got a story to tell. Give me a shout, um, absolutely we will have you on. Catherine Muldoon and Alison Matthews, Thank you very much. This is the end of the Facebook call and we will we'll just go straight to Zoom now. Cheerio, cheerio, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, I think that is Facebook stop. I, I certainly hope so. It takes a wee bit, there's a wee bit of a lag between <laughs> Facebook and, and us. Um, we are still on um, Zoom, so we have to say cheerio now. <laughs> Cheerio, <laughs> all the Zoom people. And we do this strange. Somebody said, um, "There's this thing that happens." On, yeah, this weird wave that you do that you don't do after any other meeting. Nobody does this. You don't walk out of the board meeting and go.
okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So, so to everybody who's on Zoom, um, thank you very much for watching. Obviously, you've been watching this on playback, and the same thing applies. Give me a shout if you fancy being on. And I'll end the recording.